I get emotional on calls. It's one of my issues. I'm aware of it and I monitor myself for it when I can. What can I say? I am a passionate man. My emotions aren't sad emotions. I'm unlikely to cry with a patient or anything like that. My issue is with angry emotions. I am indeed angry Bill and this is pre-hospital wisdom. We understand that medicine is medicine, but pre-hospital providers have special skills, knowledge, and culture that other providers don't have. So let's raise the bar a little. Let me give you an example of angry emotions blowing up in my face. I was sitting in the southeastern part of the city late one night with one of my favorite partners. Hi, Joe. It was a pretty quiet night, so we were just hanging out. For some reason, we were monitoring the police radio in the northeast part of the city. I think they may have had something interesting going on, so we were just eavesdropping a little and never shut it back off. In any case, we heard a call go out. Dispatch. Car 54, 100 Main Street on a check well. Check well is a welfare check. Car 54 says 100 Main Street. Dispatch says, the female party that lives in that house is a diabetic. She was in a verbal phone argument with her ex-husband and stopped responding to him. Phone hasn't been hung up. The ex would like you to check on her. Car 54 says, okay. Are the paramedics responding to or is it just us? Dispatch says, stand by, I will check. It wasn't two minutes later that I got a, an emergency call to 100 Main Street. According to my dispatch, the police were requesting an emergent ambulance for a diabetic problem. That was the beginning of my problems. I was fired up. I had just heard a simple question from the police, the correct answer to which was, no medics, just you. Instead, I have to drive across the city with lights and sirens for a welfare check that should have been handled by the police. The cops weren't even on scene yet. The responding officers hadn't asked for EMS. The woman was probably just angry and went for a walk without hanging up the phone. Communication, again, failed to occur in the communication center. Fire and brimstone, dogs and cats living together. Angry Bill. The long response had the result of getting me more worked up than I would usually be in that case. I had five or six minutes to get myself all worked up rather than just having a minute or two. In addition, my partner was not especially the kind of partner to put the brakes on my emotions. I don't exactly remember, but it was likely that he was adding his own rants to mine. Just picture two angry men driving fast, shouting about the nefarious plot to ruin our shift, amplifying each other. We arrived to quite a scene. Three police officers were standing on the hood of a police cruiser. One had a fire extinguisher sized bottle of pepper spray. One had a taser in his hand. The last had his sidearm out. All of them were standing on the hood of the police car. On the sidewalk next to the cruiser was an old yellow Labrador retriever. You can tell when a lab is old because of the gray spectacles shape on its face and nose. And this one had three legs. It was acting just like a lab would when it gets to meet new people. It was wagging its tail so hard that its whole body was wagging from side to side. Its tongue was out so it looked like it was smiling. It was just a happy, old, three-legged yellow lab. Now remember, I'm angry. So I'm not thinking as clearly as I perhaps should. I was sincerely concerned at the nightmares that would ensue following a cop shooting that dog while I could watch. It was something I felt I needed to put a stop to. I said to my partner, what the hell is going on here? They can't shoot that dog. I'm going to put a stop to all this. My partner said, Bill, you should probably wait in the bus until we figure out what's going on. The angry idiot says, that, I'm not letting them shoot that dog. My partner says, well, I'm going to wait right here while you go and deal with whatever you're going to deal with. I got out of the ambulance and walked up to the happy, old, three-legged yellow lab. It looked even happier and older close. I knelt down and talked to it with a baby voice. What's the matter? Are the big tough police officers afraid of you? No, you're a sweetie, aren't you? Is your name Twipod? Tell those tough policemen to come down. You want play? The dog nuzzled up to me, still wagging its whole body, and I gave it a good petting. I think I even got my face licked. At that point, the officer holding his pistol spoke up. Here he comes again. My stomach dropped. My taint tingled with fear. You ever get that taint tingle fear? I looked up the street behind me and initially thought a bear was charging me. It was a brown blur headed right at me. Foam was flying and whatever it was was roaring, not barking, roaring like a bear or a lion or something. It was the aggressive chow that the cops had been macing for five minutes. Yeah, shit. Good news. There's three police officers on this car and one of them has his pistol out. So I looked up at them, hopefully. The officer with the taser smiled. No room up here, dickhead. 
I panicked and took off across the front yard at full tilt, headed for a six-foot cedar fence leading into someone's backyard. I had a fleeting hope that there wasn't a Doberman in the yard closest to me that I was heading to, but mostly it was just an adrenaline-filled, high-stepping sprint for safety. You've seen shows with a celebrity who volunteers to wear the bite suit and get taken down by a police dog? It was like that, but with more panic shrieking and no bite suit. The chow was right on my tail across the yard, roaring and foaming. To this day, I don't recall how I cleared that fence. I probably just hurtled all six feet of it like Carl Lewis. The dog, probably blinded by enough OC to clear a riot, crashed into the fence right behind me. As I caught my breath, I climbed up a little to look up over the fence. The police were falling over each other laughing. They were falling off the police car. It was apparently the funniest thing they'd ever seen. If the chow had turned on them, I don't think they could have defended themselves for the laughter. The chow, who positively reeked of OC, was barking and snapping at me from the base of the fence. My partner had climbed out the window of the ambulance to look over the top of the roof. See, he shouted at me, I told you to wait in the bus. So to finish up this story quickly, I had jumped into the backyard of 100 Main Street. Her back door was unlocked and I found her on the kitchen floor in insulin shock. Her blood sugar was under 20. She was snoring. There was an alley behind her house that I told the cops and my partner about. So everyone came into the scene from the back. We fixed the patient up and took her to the hospital or whatever. We did our job. We just ignored the crazed chow in the old lab out front. As far as I know, those two dogs could still be terrorizing that neighborhood 10 years later. So the lesson, can you see how my negative mindset put me on the path to failure? I guess it wasn't a complete failure of a call, but if I had controlled those stupid, angry emotions, the call would have gone very differently. I understand that angry emotions are something to watch out for, and I think I'd do a better job now of controlling them, but not always. We all have constraints put on us through our personalities. It's important to understand those constraints or pitfalls and avoid them. Not to necessarily change who we are, but to mitigate. Who we are sets a context through which we view and affect the call. Getting fired up about nothing is one of my many pitfalls that I need to watch out for. My hope is that each of you can take a good look at yourselves and pick out the pitfalls of your emotions, of your personalities. Watch out for them and get yourselves under control. Otherwise, you may find yourselves running for your lives from bear dogs, reeking of pepper spray, and spitting foam. One of the most helpful things you can do is share this content with someone you know. Click here uh, for another video or click here, I don't know, one of these sides for the channel page and all the videos. Subscribe is another button around here somewhere. I'm Angry Bill. This is Pre-Hospital Wisdom. And until next time, my friends, stay safe.